We're here. Just want to make sure everything's working. Good. Good deal. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. Okay, so our recording and live streaming has started. So uh, if you guys are ready, we're ready to go. All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Burke County Board of Commissioners special Zoom meeting for Friday, May the 22nd, 2020 at two o'clock p.m. At this time, I'll call our meeting to order and welcome all of y'all here. We'll do a roll call at this time. Uh, roll call, uh, Vice Chair Mulwee. Here. Commissioner Abley? Here. Commissioner Britton? Here. Commissioner Taylor? Here. And myself, Kay, we are all here. County Manager? I'm here. County Attorney? Present. And Deputy County Ma Manager and Finance Officer? Here. Thank you so very much. Okay, gentlemen and ladies, if you would, check your mobile devices if you have anything with you that would make any background noise, if you would at this time silence those for me and I would appreciate it. We'll move into our first item for decision today was a continuation from BDI, the Building Reuse Grant and Local Economic Development Grant for Project Refresh. Uh, since we closed the public hearing, uh, I have been made aware that, I've been aware that uh, no public comments were received during the 24 hour extension required by House Bill 704. Therefore, I will open it up for any other questions or comments. Any, any questions or comments? All right, hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, um, just as a matter of clarification, did we approve the agenda or did we need to? Let me back up. You were right, sir, I did not. Uh, I'm so sorry. Y'all gonna have to bear with me just a little bit. I've been on another two and a half hour Zoom this morning with the NCACC, so let me regroup here. Let's take a, a motion to approve the agenda. So move. All right, uh, Commissioner Walwe? Yes. Commissioner Abley? Yes. Commissioner Britton? Yes. Commissioner Taylor? Yes. And yes, myself. Okay, now we got the agenda approved, so we're back for the decision items. Okay, once again, is there any other questions or comments about the building reuse grant? All right, hearing none, then I will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I would move to adopt resolution number 2020-15 to approve the recommended local economic development grant equivalent to 60% of the taxes paid on the new taxable investment of approximately $18.5 million for five years and the creation of 151 new jobs by the end of 2020. And also to approve a grant between Burke County and Western Piedmont Council of Governments for grant administration subject to a grant award and authorize the county manager to execute the contract on behalf of the board. Mr. Chairman, was, was that for the year 2022 or 2020? 2022. Okay. Yeah. Jeff, I think you said 2020, but we understood it in 2022, correct? That is correct, 2020. Right. Any other further discussion? Not, we'll do the roll call vote. Vice Chair Mulway? Yes. Commissioner Abel? Yes. And Commissioner Britton? Yes. Commissioner Taylor? Yes. And I will vote yes also, okay, so that will be unanimous. All right, moving on to item number two with aging will be the Home and Community Care Block Grant for 2021. Uh, presented by Tina Miller or Sarah Stamey, whichever one may be here from Western Piedmont Council of Governments Area Aging uh, Agency on Aging. So which one have I got on? I don't have a screen. It's Tina Miller. Oh, uh, go, go ahead, Tina. Good afternoon from uh, beautiful Holden Beach. I'm on vacation, but uh, came in so I can present this for you. Uh, appreciate uh, allowed to come in front of you virtually. Um, 
basically have the home and community care block grant um, budget for you to approve for FY21, uh, the Burke County Council on Aging um, that you appoint as your planning um, committee. Uh, met virtually um, and uh, discussed the budget allocations that we were given. Um, unfortunately, we have a reduction in funds from current year of $13,517 uh, due to um, not having a past state budget. There was non-reoccurring funds that were in there as an increase and they have had to remove those since they've not been able to pass a budget. So that um, made a reduction for every county across North Carolina and Burke County's reduction was 13,517. The um, Burke County Council on Aging um, elected to take that reduction in funds from congregate nutrition and home delivered meals. Um, and you'll see there their reduction is, is listed, 5,000 a reduction from congregate and 10,019 uh, from home delivered meals. And the reason that they chose to take it from the nutrition programs is due to the additional funds that the nutrition programs are getting because of the COVID-19. They're getting an additional $76,000 from the Families First Act and we'll get, be getting about that much or more from the CARES Act, we still don't know. So they're getting ready to get a lot of additional funds to support nutrition programs. And so the committee did decide to um, take that reduction from those two programs because that would be the least disruptive to service delivery. Um, also the committee, um, it was our year to review um, sealed bids from um, anyone who wanted to put uh, forth a uh, bid to provide medical transportation or in-home aid services for Burke County. Um, and the committee reviewed the bids. Again, we did it virtually, which was challenging, but we got it done. Um, and they did um, vote to stick with the current providers um, that we've had for a number of years in Burke County, um, Handicare for medical transportation and Catawba Valley Medical Services for in-home aid level three. Those are both, both Burke County businesses and they wanted to keep that, um, keep that uh, the same and did not want to change that. So um, this is our recommendation. Um, we would again, like you to approve the home and community care block grant funding allocation as recommended by the Burke County Council on Aging and approve the um, home and community care block grant agreement between Burke County and the Western Piedmont Council of Governments Area Agency on Aging for FY 2021. All righty. Any questions? All right, you've heard Tina's presentation. Gentlemen, any questions or comments? Tina, I just had one, if I may. This is Maynard Taylor. Uh, I just wondered, and I guess it's not an important <laughs> person anymore, but how many people were affected by that $15,000 reduction? And I understand it was a state mandate, so you really didn't have much choice. But uh, since you've got all the other stuff on the other hand, but Anyhow, if you have that answer, it'd be good just to know that, um, you know, if, if you cut it 15,000, how many meals were we talking about uh, the senior citizens not getting? Well, thank you for the question. Um, as, I, as I stated, we chose, or the, the Council on Aging chose to reduce those meals, um, the nutrition uh, program budgets, because it would not cut service from seniors because of the Families First Act and the CARES Act funding that we're going to be receiving that'll go straight to um, Burke Senior Services that provides those nutrition programs. Most of the seniors, instead of getting um, one meal five days a week, are going to start being able to get two meals seven days a week. Um, and so that's where um, we're putting our emphasis to try to, to give food to those folks who are homebound and not able to get to the nutrition sites and, and things like that. We're also gonna be supporting them with groceries and hopefully even maybe some restaurant vouchers for restaurants that deliver food, um, produce boxes. We've got a lot of things planned um, and working with Roxanne Powell over at the Burke Senior Services. So we don't, um, you know, 
we're, we're lucky that we've got additional funding to make up that $15,000 cut. So we don't anticipate any of our seniors going without a meal. They're actually going to be, be getting much more than they've been getting and able to add additional folks on, which I know Roxanne has already added several new folks on to the programs um, for, you know, because of the pandemic and, and folks being, you know, stuck at home, we've been able to add a lot more to it because of these additional funds. Thank you. All right, there any other questions or comments for Tina? If not, what's the pleasure of the board on her presentation? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the home and community care block grant funding allocations as recommended by the Burke Council on Aging and approve the HCCBG agreement between Burke County and Western Piedmont Council of Government Area Agency on Aging for years 2021, subject to review and or revision by the county attorney. Further eyes, authorize the chairman to execute the aforementioned documents. Mr. Chairman, I believe you were muted. All right, I'm so sorry. You've heard the, uh, Commissioner Taylor's uh, motion. Now we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Vice Chair Moley? Yes. Commissioner Abley? Yes. Commissioner Britton? Yes. And I will vote yes also, so that will be unanimous. Thank you so very much, Tina, for that presentation. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Have fun, Tina. Back to the beach. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to our next item for di uh, discussion that will be from the finance department. We're looking for a request for a tax rate change and I will turn that over to Margaret. Margaret? Yes, sir. Um, we have uh, the tax rates listed from the fire districts. We did receive a budget request from all fire departments uh, listing their needs for the coming year. We had two departments request a tax increase. <clears throat> Brindletown and Glen Alpine and representatives from each are on the call to answer any questions you may have. In your packet, you'll see the information from uh, both. Brindletown put in there that they are asking for a tax increase for a new building and the potential for uh, borrowing for a truck, I believe, in the future. The other for Glen Alpine, uh, the information is there and they are available to answer questions on theirs further as well. Do you have questions for either of them? All right, you've heard Margaret's presentation. Gentlemen, have you, anybody got any questions for Bob Benfield from Glen Alpine or Brian Williams from Brindletown? All right, hearing no questions from anybody, at this time we'll do a, a roll call. This will be a directive from each of you to either proceed with the request or not. And we will start with Vice Chair Mulway. Yes. Commissioner Abley? Yes. Commissioner Britton? Yes. Commissioner Taylor? Mr. Taylor? I Have we lost Mr. Muted. Taylor? He's muted. Okay. I don't have his picture up. Scott, can you unmute him? Yes, I've unmuted him. Uh, well, I tried. Let me try again. Okay. Is he back yet? Try yeah. now. Should be good now. Commissioner Taylor, Taylor, can you hear me? Hello. Hey, can you hear me, Commissioner Taylor? Yes, sir. Okay, did you have any questions or concerns about these uh, uh, requests? Yes, I did. Uh, okay. Sir, I had, uh, I think, three questions. The first one was, um, uh, do we know how much increase 
both these entity got when we did the uh, reevaluation. Uh, the increase should have been about 7% uh, growth. And the other questions I had was how much in dollars uh, does this, uh, as an additional fund, if they increase it to this amount? And uh, uh, the third question was, uh, was there a public hearing? Do they have a reading of their community that they're willing to accept that tax increase? All right, Margaret, you want to go for that one? Yes, sir. Um, because of the COVID, they did electronic, I believe, for each. And I think they are on the line and can confirm that for you, Mr. Taylor. Uh, I do not have the reval changes or increase in dollar amounts uh, with me. They may have those uh, for you, but I can bring them back to our next budget meeting. Brian Williams, do you have the answer to Commissioner Taylor's questions for your Brindletown department? Uh, yes, sir, I do. Okay, go ahead, sir. Um, so the increase, um, we have not had an increase in Brindletown since 2014. At that time, we went to the eight cent. Um, we, uh, we have uh, a truck that is aging out in 2021. Um, we have a pumper, which is our first out truck. Um, it ages out due to the 20 year rule in the North Carolina guidelines. So that truck has a 18 month lead time. So we would like, uh, we put this before the community and we did have a, we did have a meeting. We had an outside meeting where we kept social distancing, checked everybody's temperature. Uh, we had a unanimous vote for um, the tax rate increase, the approval for a new truck and the proposal for investigating the new land purchase to put a new building up. Um, we had a unanimous vote in the community last week. The additional funding that we've asked for, the two and a half cents, it, at the 97% uh, or 95% tax rate will be $69,472.81 uh, in addition. Those two, those, uh, the two and a half cent will not make the mortgage payment on the truck and the building. So uh, they only close part of the gap. I do have the fire department meeting minutes. Um, I also have all the addresses of the folks who was at the meeting and then the letter that we submitted to the county as well. Yes. well I'd like to commend you for taking a forward step and having a public meeting and getting rid of you of your citizens uh, before you decided to uh, bring it to our attention. I congratulate you for that. Thank you very much. Well, I mean, it's their community and um, it, it's their community and they have to be a part of it. And we run a very transparent fire department and within our district. So uh, we want them to know and they need to be part of it. So thank you. Thank you, Brian. Any other questions or comments for Brian? Mayor Benfield, do you have any numbers that you can share? I don't have the numbers. Uh, I would like to, uh, as you know, our situation is a little bit unique compared to, to the others in the county in that most of our law, most of our tax money for the fire district that we are, that is legally ours goes to Lake James Fire Department uh, in, in uh, fiscal year 16, 17. Our taxes from Lake James are $24,182.63. The county board voted to strip us of that money, gave it to Lake James, and we're getting nothing, and our equipment is basically gone. Uh, as far as having a meeting, uh, I don't think the way things are situated, we could possibly have a meeting with uh, Lake, with Lake James getting that money and us not. Our biggest problem is you cut us down to where we don't have a base 
and the citizens of Glen Alpin are having to fund everything for our outside fire district, and we're asking for a little bit of relief. It's not going to be a lot of money because we don't have that many in our district. All right, thank you, Bob. Any questions for the mayor from anybody? Did he did he know the difference? How much more money that would bring in, Mr. Chairman? Do you know the difference, Bob? I believe it's five thousand uh, dollars. Uh, I'm thinking around that. Yeah. I didn't hear you, Margaret. Would you? Sorry, read I believe it's about five thousand dollars. Oh. I think you're right. Uh, I don't have the figures right in front of me. I really didn't know what to expect for this meeting. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Any other questions or comments for for Bob? All right, let's back up now. Then do the roll call directives again, uh, either to move forward or which or if there's any other directives you want to give to Margaret. Starting with uh, Vice Chair Moley. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, is this for Glen Alpine or Brindletown or for both of them together? But we're going to do both of them together. Okay, Scott, are you still okay doing both together? Yes. Okay, Commissioner Abley? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Britton? Yes. And Commissioner Taylor? Yes. And I want to move forward with that too, okay? So that will be unanimous, okay? All righty, thank you very much. Okay, let's move on to item number two from finances, the fiscal year 2021 budget explanation of change and items of note, and that will be presented by Margaret Pierce, our Deputy County Manager Finance Director. All right, Margaret. Yes, sir. So you have within your packet the notes about the changes broken down by department. Um, pull my packet back up, sorry. And um, I'm happy to go through those line by line. Stop me if I come to something and you have questions, please. On the revenue side, we are looking at property tax being up slightly. We went back and evaluated the state's recommendation to go down versus what we saw through the recession, which was that Burke County citizens do a great job of taking care of their taxes. And we did not feel that we would need to reduce that budget number. Um, on the sales tax side, we are concerned based on the things that have been closed, the limited um, uh, social distancing and how that could have an impact. The state recommendation was to drop your revenue by approximately 25%. Uh, in evaluating the numbers, uh, my sentiment and everything I can see so far is that that may have been too much for our area. We are budgeting down approximately 13% from where we're currently trending. We won't know because we haven't even seen sales tax from any of the months that were really affected by COVID yet. That is a huge unknown for our budget um, and, and, and probably our biggest area of concern that we just can't get a handle on that number because three months of it will come after June 30th, um, which is significant. Other revenues that uh, have changed significantly would be intergovernmental. That has to do with uh, grants and one-time fundings from the state and federal dollars that are uh, in there. We are hoping that with uh, recommendations for additional staffing at the jail, that bed rentals will increase and we will see revenues from that. Of course, they'll need time to get their staff in place. So we don't anticipate a full year's revenue on that, but we are hoping that based on conversations and what they felt like they could do uh, rate wise and bed wise that we should see hopefully $600,000 in bed rental in the coming fiscal year. Significant revenues by department are on page four of the budget. You'll see that um, building inspections feels like they're gonna be up they are seeing that trend and it has not changed. So they felt like that was a good number to give us. Department of Social Services is up uh, about 55,000. EMS is down slightly and that relates to the uh, Medicaid cost settlement and how it relates back three years to expenditures during that year and revenues seen. 
The health department will be up slightly uh, more in fees than necessarily state dollars because we are seeing some trends in uh, additional fees from the uh, per month per member uh, dollars received from the uh, state. The library should be up a small amount that ties to a project that of renovations and minor repairs, painting that's needed at the Morganton building and Morganton's revenue would be up $30,000 to us because of it. Registered deeds would be down a small amount and I think that is appropriate. We are seeing good revenues right now, but there is an anticipation that things could level off for them. Senior services revenues are flat at this time, although once we receive information and final dollars, the ones that Tina spoke about, we don't have the exact number yet. We will come back to you with that information to change their budget. Margaret? Yes, ma'am. Would you like for me to display the pages that you're, you're going over? Are you in the budget document? Yes, ma'am. Uh, you can, that's page four. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. The um, sheriff's department revenue would be up slightly and that again would be tied to the bed rentals as much as anything. So our overall recommended budget, you'll see um, within your document, the sales tax funds are projected up slightly for the school. Some of that's due to interest revenue and some of that is because we were probably a little conservative this year on the budgeting. 911 funds are up and that is tied to the state uh, projection of what they will send us for that. At this point, trail project fund is down simply because they have significant projects still in process and grants out there. However, no new county dollars are projected for trail projects this year. Water sewer fund will be up approximately 22,000 over last year's budget and solid waste fund would be down about 359,000 and that's due to current budgeting for the gas extraction system and the uh, construction of another cell that should be completed during this fiscal year. Uh, the cell would be completed. The gas extraction will still continue into next year some, uh, but hopefully have a significant amount of the expenditures done. Overall, as you read in Brian's message, when you add general fund, and the other six funds together, that comes to a recommendation of $109,436,985. Okay, we'll move back to the packet information now if no one has questions on revenues. Uh, Margaret? Yes, sir. Just one comment back in the, on Brian's message, uh, I think it might be page four of the budget document or maybe page one, depending on how, how you're looking at it. Uh, but it's on the beginning of his uh, message. Uh, the second paragraph says on March 7, 2019, the public schools submitted their budget. Should that be 2020? Yes, sir. Thank you for catching that. No matter how many times we read it and I'll check it, we still missed it. Are there any other questions or comments from Margaret at this point of her presentation? What, how are you going from here, Margaret? Are you ready for just a general question or? I would be fine, that's up to you. You have the notes and the details. I'm happy to read through those or simply maybe respond to some general questions. What would you like? Gentlemen, would you just rather respond to general questions? I think it might be quicker and easier if that's okay. That's good with me. Okay. Uh, uh, who would like to start first with some questions? I'll be happy to. Um, okay. Uh, Margaret, bear with me just a moment. Uh, this will take a little, I guess, filling in to get to my real question. Uh, in our current budget, uh, we had... Uh, I think a fund balance at the end of last year of 16,987,127, almost $17 million. And then if I read everything correctly, 
uh, in the uh, uh, new budget, or rather in the current budget, we had budgeted 4 million 719 and some other dollars for potential uh, expenditure from fund balance. And as I looked at last quarter's uh, numbers and trying to kind of in, interpolate what I think I, I, I hear you and Brian saying about the way we've controlled costs, is it a fair statement that there's a reasonable expectation that we won't use very much of that fund balance that we had budgeted? Yes and no. The expenditures are controlled. The big unknown is gonna be that sales tax. Because we have five months that we don't know yet, right. that will have a huge impact on that. If those are down 25%, we would use more of fund balance because we would not have that revenue to replace it. But we do not expect to use 4.7 million. Uh, you received a sheet from Brian earlier today. You may not have had a chance to look at it yet. I did. Okay. So within that document, it, it explained that 2 million of the 4.7 is from projects that were still in process, like the Sally Port, the Valdez Library, those are not in that 16 million figure. Right. So what's hitting that 16 million is the 2.6 that's been appropriated in the current year. Right. And that does not account for things that won't be, won't get expended. And at the same time, it doesn't account for what the unknown of the sales tax reduction. Correct. Correct. Okay. On a normal basis, it would be uh, a little bit easier to try to estimate those things and try to get an idea of where, how much we might use, how much we wouldn't. But I don't think it's prudent to try to do that when the sales tax number is such a critical piece of that. And it's the one that we're being told is the most vulnerable at this point in time. Right. Okay, um, that's all I need, Mr. Chairman. All right. Who would like to go next? Mr. Chairman, let me tag on Jeff's questions there okay. with an explanation point. Uh, Margaret, the fact that we're dealing with taxes or the lack of taxes after the third quarter, you should know what the fund balance is it's not going to affect what the fund balance was at the end of March. It may affect what the fund balance will be at the end of June. Uh, not, not being able to devour that number uh, is like me not being able to say within a reasonable amount how much is in my checking account. So yeah, that, your explanation and Brian's is, uh, doesn't hold water when that question or that amount is always readily available within minutes or should be. Mr. Chairman, I also uh, uh, had, um, I had a question about, I'm, I'm changing gears on you, I'm sorry. DSS, uh, the reduction in benefits, the question I had on that, did that come from us farming out uh, the uh, child support earlier? Was that where that difference came from? Some of it, but uh, there are also several beneficiary payments where it's uh, pass through funds. For example, the LEAP program and the uh, crisis intervention payments for heating and air conditioning needs and fuel needs of clients, those allocations are down. And that's very common at the beginning of the fiscal year. And then they, we tend to see three allocations from them. This budget includes the initial because we won't know those additional allocations until later. Uh, can we get an update on the um, 
child support that we farmed out. I don't, I don't think we've got an update that maybe once one time since we uh, did that. Um, but I, I would like an update on that. On the general services, I had the understanding we were going to add one employee. You say we're adding three employees. What positions? That would be um, a senior accounting tech to assist them with their office needs and managing their bill payments and uh, contracts. Then a, a facilities maintenance technician to assist be specialized in HVAC and a facilities maintenance tech to be specialized in electrical work. Okay. Air conditioning, heat, electrical, and an off office personnel, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, what type of update on child support would you like? Are you looking for numbers of clients served? Well, uh, the whole point was to improve that picture. We, uh, I got phone calls at the house myself because people would go to DSNS and they were supposed to get a hold of their ex-husband or wife, whichever the case, and get some money. And it was just wasn't working. And a, a good report, general report, are we improving? Are we not? Uh, to what percentage are we improving? Um, Commissioner, I will, say, I will say that I have not had a phone call in at least three or four months. Commissioner Taylor, I might respond to that a little bit. Um, uh, in fact, I asked that question in our DSS board meeting as to how, how the process was going. Uh, response was from the folks that are responsible for keeping all that together, uh, was that it's, it's going well. The, the, the downside is uh, COVID-19 has disrupted you know, some of those processes when you're trying to find people, uh, you know, for debt collection, that kind of thing. It, it's, it has made that a bit more difficult, but uh, an, an overall explanation was that uh, uh, our folks at DSS who are responsible for continuing to, to collect the data and get that data through the state process uh, indicate that they were pleased and satisfied with, with the process given all the circumstances with the virus at this time. But Jeff, have we have we made progress? I guess my question is, if you've got two thousand people in Burke County, and uh, we were serving forty percent of them, have we have we progressed any in that category? Uh, the data I don't have it right in front of me, but the data was was stable. Again, uh, the fact that you know everybody's been confined has hampered the, the, the abilities and not just that program, but other programs has, has had some difficulty as well. But uh, I think overall the, the progress is good and the numbers look, look good, acceptable to me given the circumstance. The final question I had, uh, thank you, Jeff. The final question I have, Ms. Chairman, was on the training. Um, it was uh, a, a, a big amount, and I'm assuming, uh, we don't know what that training is, I am assuming that is a pot of, pot of money to use for our employees should they seek or want additional training somewhere. Is that correct? Are you referring to the county manager's budget where it referenced training increases? Yes. That is for a special program that was requested within that one budget. Um, and we don't know what that training would be because many of the, it's a school of government class. Many of those are going online. So those costs may be less going forward. Well, it was uh, right at $18,000 and that seemed, uh, I don't know, uh, it's an increase of 17.7. What's the total amount for training? Brian, you may know more about the exact class that you were requesting that for. This is the city county managers um, class that I was going to send Lance to. And that's about a week for five months in a row. We've sent uh, Scott Carpenter to that. And we've also sent Rhonda Lee to that. 
and in order to prepare Lance for a broader future with Burke County, I think it's appropriate for him to go to that. The total uh, training budget is $15,710 for the county manager's department. How much? $15,710. No, his is 17735 increase. So what's the total amount? I think that is for the entire county manager's budget and oh. training is a part of that. So it's not just specific to training. Margaret, can you verify that? I apologize that isn't clear. Training increase is the predominant factor in that $17,000 increase. Another small factor is that Mr. Steen will reach longevity status this year. So we needed to increase um, salary and benefit for his uh, first longevity payment. Uh, but the majority of that increase is tied to training. Now you just said part of it was part of an increase, salary increase, which is it? The overall department increase, Mr. Taylor, is 17,735. I can go line by line for you if you'd like. The training increase was this, the most significant piece of that. But then, so not all of it's not training, is that what you're saying? No, sir. Within each department, I just tried to give you the primary increase Rather but, than go line by line, I apologize if that was confusing. I'm happy to address it that way if you'd like. The language is simple. It's not confusing. It's not accurate. Part of it is training. Part of it is an increase in salary. We need to separate the two. Okay. okay. Margaret, oh, that's the last question, Mr. Chairman. Margaret, in those numbers, uh, separated in the, the detailed budget piece? Yes, sir. They are. The county manager's is on page 13 of the document itself. I'm not sure in your packet what page it would be. Um, however, each line is separated there. Um, and I'm happy to provide further details if I need to. In the, in the budget package, uh, uh, the package itself, I think it's page 26, main of the governing board. It gives you line by line. Uh, I think the information that that you want to see is right there uh, on in the book itself. It's probably page twenty two if if I'm looking at the right place. That's governing board. That's your you and your five of you and K. Yes, you're uh, county I'm managers. Sorry. That that's that's not the same, Jeff. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong page. Do you have the other page number, Margaret? Page thirteen in the thirteen is what I've got. Hey, go down. It's on the yeah. bottom part of the page. If you'll. Yeah, sorry, man. I was looking at the wrong page number. There you go. So the salaries went from 224,795 to 228,615. The allowance for travel stays the same. The allowance for cell phone, um, as a general note, um, in the county manager's budget, cell phone allowances were removed unless they were contracted. This will save the county over $13,000. Um, Brian felt like this was something that is uh, easily absorbed now that, that you do not have an additional fee typically that we can track for use of cell phones. The insurance went up 2% from 18,500 to 18,870. Social Security went up from 14,265 to 14,505. This would be because of this salary increase. Hold it. I was not asking for all that, Margaret. I'm sorry. I just wanted to clarify um, what kind of training the $17,000 was because it was so much more than expected. And it called for additional, which meant there's some to remain. And I was trying to find that. I can read this. You don't need to go over that for me. Okay. All right. Um, 
Do you have other questions on the training? No, no, that was my last question. Okay. Um, throughout the budget document, the retirement that we pay into the uh, local government retirement system is up 1.2% over last year. That becomes about $310,000 throughout our budgets. That's a piece of an increase within all departments. Health insurance, we were, have had a really good year, so we were able to hold that at 2%. Um, and Rhonda may be able to speak further on, we have added a slightly different tier. We broke from three tiers of insurance to four for the dependents. And that should, some, some employees should see a cost savings from that, but we were um, pleased to be able to offer that to them. Other increases would include uh, the pay plan that Rhonda is going to present next. Um, with this being our first year of going back through the three, the cycle of uh, three years for employees. And the last is that we are hopeful. We do not feel that it is prudent to do a cost of living increase as of July 1st. We would like to look at that again in January potentially doing a 1% increase if sales tax has, if once we have a better idea about sales tax and property tax as our two primary uh, revenues. Other things that we would look at again in January is uh, the school system funding, Western Piedmont Community College funding, and some other capital projects. We have spoken to the school system and Western Piedmont, and they certainly understand the circumstances we're under at this point in time and are recognize us waiting and re reviewing that. And they appreciate that we will at least be able to maybe talk about it again in the spring. Margaret, one, one quick question, uh, or not really a question. If you just comment for anybody that's not familiar how, how we get sales tax paid to us and, and when it's paid, um, maybe just give some clarity to anybody that might be listening and is wondering why we won't know until the fall. Yes, sir. So a retail business is collecting sales tax during the month of May. They're required to remit it to the state, I believe by the 20th of June. The state then takes the month of July to really look at it and gather all the information, do all their calculations, and then they remit it to us the 15th, around the 15th of August. So it's pretty much a three month lag, two and a half month lag between the time you go and buy something at the store and we know what those dollars might be for us. So during the month of July, August and September, we receive sales tax each month, but it is for the prior fiscal year. And that's why a third, 25% of our major revenue, we don't even know until after our year's closed out. Thanks for the clarity. Are there other questions? Mr. Abley, you have any questions? No, I'm fine, thank you. Okay. Scott, did you have any other besides what you just asked? Not, not at this time. Jeff, anything else? No, sir. Okay, Maynard, anything else? Not at this point, Mr. Chairman. I will have plenty later. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Uh, Margaret, do you want to tell them the difference between the current budget year and what the recommended budget is looking like, the difference? Yes, sir. So from our overall budget, and I'm talking about all funds, not just general fund, from, we are currently in the current year, that number is approximately 116 million and the new recommended budget is 109 million. So it is down $6.7 million from the current budget. The new one is 109 million? Yes, sir. That's not just general fund, that's all funds. Sales tax, water, sewer, solid waste, trails, 911. Yeah, total revenue. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, any other comments or questions before we move forward? 
All righty. Is there any other directives that you need to give to Margaret this time from anyone? All right, if not, we'll move on to item number three and talk about our pay and classification study. And that will be presented by Rhonda Lee, HR Director. Rhonda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the commissioners for allowing us to review this again uh, for the, uh, this is the first year as Margaret had mentioned earlier for the second cycle. We were able to, to complete the three-year cycle for all employees and now we've, we've circled back around and starting the process over again. And uh, we were very pleased with the results. Kate, if you don't mind, could you show the, um, the recommendations? Thank you, please. Uh, what you have before you, those that are highlighted in yellow, um, let me back up a little bit. We had an outside firm, again, we contracted with uh, HR Essentials uh, to take care of this for us. And these areas, these job class descriptions are the ones in yellow that have been recommended for an increase. And for each pay grade, like for the first one where it's a convenience site attendant, uh, the current pay grade is a nine. The recommended pay grade to start July 1 is a 10. In between each pay grades is 5%. So uh, that means the convenience site attendance and the minimum of that salary would go up 5%. And um, the ones that don't have an increase, like the associate engineer, the facilities maintenance tech one, facilities maintenance tech two, uh, there is no recommendation for movement in the pay grade for those, only those highlighted in yellow, um, which came up to about 82.5, 82,500 would be the impact. And that's about 19% of what it was last year. So um, I think our efforts are really paying off. It's helping tremendously with our retention and recruitment. And um, I can go through each of these individually, but I think you guys can see um, what's being recommended, but I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. All right, gentlemen, questions for Rhonda on e any of these positions that are recommended for increases? Excuse me, Chairman, I got uh, somebody at the door. Okay, sir. Okay, can you scroll that screen down again? Okay. Oh, I would like to clarify where it's GS, GIS manager reclass to assistant IT director. Uh, that was a recommendation. Uh, actually, it was request through that department. And we had our um, analysts review that, and this is the recommendation to reclass that position to an assistant IT director, and that would be a, a three pay grade uh, differential for that. Rhonda, is the sheriff included in the sworn officers? He is not. He is included in the uh, department head, and that was the um, that was studied last year. Okay, thank you. And the um, law enforcement um, is uh, uh, the major. Uh, his was off from the uh, market average. And so he's at the top of that pay grade for sworn law. And so that's the recommendation to move him up one pay grade. Any other questions? Right on the parks and maintenance, uh, parks and rec maintenance supervisor, that's recommended to go up 15%. Uh, or was there any particular reason on that reclass? Or to go? It was just because 20? we were that, yes, sir. We were just that far off with market average for the surrounding counties. Okay, good. That's what they all are. Uh, it was all based on, we're trying to still stay at that 100% of market average for the minimum pay. And um, so that was because we were off that that much for those positions. There were a couple that would, um, I think that's the highest was 15% than any of them were gonna be going. Um, but that that is why. So we are still staying at 100% of market, not more than that. 
No, that's what we're, yeah, that's still what we're trying to do. 100% of market average. And Rhonda, okay. would, would you give a description on, uh, when you say market average, how do they get the market average? Just so if folks are listening, they understand what we're doing. Sure. Thank you. Sure, exactly. Um, what we do is for the surrounding counties uh, to Berg, um, we take the same position, say um, a GIS technician, and we see what the minimum uh, salary, we add those up and then we get the average of what their minimum salary is for that same position. Then we compare it to what we have, uh, what our uh, pay grade is for that. And um, if, it's, if it's equal, then we do, we do not recommend any increase. But if we're off, uh, say, 5, 10, 15%, that's when uh, we are recommending a, a pay grade increase for those. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yes, great. Thank you. <laughs> Have you gotten to the bottom of that page yet, uh, Madam Clerk? Is that the end of it? That's it, yes. So it looked like we held pretty good uh, with our, our DSS folks. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. We're still, we're still competitive um, with that. And this is about, this affects about 221 positions that we actually reviewed. I think that puts us in a lot better place than we've been in the past. Yeah. Rhonda, is our, uh, is our turnover rate uh, anywhere constant or staying pretty much what it was? It's not on a rise, is it anywhere in particular? Uh, no, it's kind of, it's, it's stabilizing. And um, I think that's because of all the things that the commissioners have approved uh, over the last year, um, as far as like the pay goes and stuff, it's, it's made a tremendous difference. All right, gentlemen, any other questions or comments? Yes, Chairman. Uh, Rhonda, in the mm -hmm. Sheriff's Department and all those, how many of those uh, are there? I can't count them the way the sheet keeps jumping up and down. Um, <laughs> how many total? I will have to pull up. I don't. Go ahead. Oh. I don't have that number in front of me. Rebecca, are you on the line? You may can uh, shout out the exact number of public health nurses you guys have right off the top of your head. I have eight nurses, but I think ours didn't change, did they? No. Mm -mm. No. I have eight and asked for one. Well, in the, in the sheriff's department, we remember last year, we gave all of them across the board uh 15 percent raise then we gave them a cost of living at three and some of them got a cost of living uh before three that's a total of anywhere from 18 to 21 percent increase are these outside that or are these did, did these also get that the ones you have on the list the positions um, if I'm understanding your co uh, question correctly, there there is no recommendation for the sworn law or detention officers to go up at all right now. Um, and and uh, Commissioner Taylor, I think that's probably attributable to that we did adjust them back in, uh, I think it was the spring of 2019 for the sworn law and then um, in July for the detention officers and they're holding steady with the market average. Uh, I, I didn't hear that last phrase. They're holding what? They're holding steady. They're 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 still at about a hundred percent of the market average for starting pay for our surrounding counties. The only one out of the entire sheriff's department that's changing is the uh, the major. That's major. the only one in the entire sheriff's department changing from this study. That's correct. Well, may I call you at some point? I'd like some information. I don't know if you could get it all for me or not in time or not, but uh, I'd like to see if you could get sure. the information. Thank you, ma'am. Sure, I'd be, be glad to help. Rhonda, last, last year for clarity, didn't we give the uh, sworn officers 
uh, if I, I may be mistaken, but 12% raise and a 3% COLA for a total of 15. Am I wrong on that? Uh, that's correct. Sir. Then I think we did 10% on the non-sworn. On the detention? Yes. Yes, you are okay. correct. Okay, just one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? All right, are there any other directives that we need to give to Rhonda Lee at this time regarding these pay and classification studies? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to item number four. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you. All right, um, item number four from finance for the fiscal year 2021, proposed fee changes. Margaret? Yes, sir. We had, uh, we spoke to all departments and worked with them to evaluate their fees, particularly considering the economic conditions. And there were only three departments that we wanted to propose some changes to. Building inspections uh, goes by the group building code. You'll see that large chart that comes from the International Code Council. And they change each year to go by the one that is in effect as of July 1, which is the current document. The health department had three fees that uh, were mandated to change based on the changing cost for them. Uh, and the health department board has approved this proposed uh, current fee to the proposed changes on those. And then the land record department is requesting to simplify their chart and also become more uh, comparable with their cost. Those are the only fee changes we are requesting within the budget this year. Uh, questions for Margaret on fee changes? Anyone? All right, is there any other direction that we need to give Margaret on fee changes from anybody? All right, hearing none, we will move on and oh, that's it for the budget today the uh let me give you a couple of courtesy reminders that uh, paper copies of the budget are available for pickup or we will deliver to you just let us know what you'd like to do we will continue with another uh, may 28th of budget meeting by zoom at two o'clock p.m and then hopefully by uh, June the 2nd, when we do our next pre-agenda, we will be able to be in the county boardroom. I would like to ask if anybody has any uh, questions that require Brian or Margaret to do any research, if you need numbers or any other documentation, if you would email them as quickly as you can with, with, with your request for what they may need to get you before the next budget meeting so that we can make absolutely sure that you can get the information that you need. If you would do that, I would appreciate it. Okay. Is there anything else that needs to come before the board this afternoon? All right, if not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right, Vice Chair Moley. Yes. Mr. Abley. Yes. Mr. Britton. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. And myself, yes. All right. Thank you so very much. Appreciate you being on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.